You've heard it said that an eagle has the best eyesight of anything in nature. We know it can pick out its prey at a phenomenal distance against any background. And once it locks on, the target has had it. The eagle has remarkable eyes, all right. But they don't compare to the eyes of this eagle. F-15 aircraft, equipped with the Hughes APG-63 fire control radar, have been operational for some time with the Triple Nickel Training Squadron at Luke Air Force Base in Arizona. Category 1 and Category 2 testing has been completed, and a series of special tests in the United States and Europe has proved the radar's capabilities in the field. Operating under all weather conditions, the F-15, using its APG-63 fire control radar, defeated all comers in aerial combat. These tests were conducted against seven different types of aircraft, including specially modified lightweight versions simulating the best enemy aircraft. During the tests, the radar lived up to all combat performance claims. As one pilot put it, All of us have heard how great the F-15's radar is and how easy it is to use. And I found this to be true. By placing the primary radar controls on the throttles and the stick, you don't have to take your hands off the aircraft controls during an attack. But all of this doesn't mean much unless you get performance, and that's where I was really impressed. First, there was the range. On this mission, we used an F-4 aircraft as a target. No matter what his altitude or aspect, I found I could detect and track him at very long range. The images on the radar display really impressed me. The scope was so sharp and clear, I couldn't believe it. But the real test came when he dropped down to very low altitude to escape detection. On the old set, you almost always lose a low target in clutter. Any pilot knows it's toughest to detect and track a target when you have to look down at him. Even current radars will lose him if he's at your 12 o'clock position and on the same heading. But on this radar, I found the return was sharp and clear, with no clutter, even when the target was flying at very low altitude and I was coming up his tail. You only see real targets, and they really jump out at you. Another thing, you know when you're tracking a target and he crosses to give you a 90-degree beam? You usually break lock with older radars. But the F-15's radar hangs right in there and tracks him all the way through. There are several reasons for such good radar performance. But the major reason is that this is the first operational radar to employ both high and medium pulse repetition frequencies. Medium PRF allows you to operate down on the deck when you're on the target's tail. High PRF gives you those long-range detections when the target is coming right at you, when you need it the most. Keeping track of targets is made easy by a feature called frame storage. By adjusting a knob, your scope can store up to seven returns from the same target. This gives you a chance to work on other things without having to worry about losing them. One glance tells you where he is and which way he's headed. All you have to do is punch the knob to clear the scope. When you're ready to lock on, it's quick and simple. As the target comes in missile range, you launch the missile. The radar keeps the target illuminated for missile guidance even though he's far beyond visual range. For close-in targets, the radar gives you a mode called Super Search. That makes one-man operation possible, because you don't have to monitor the scope to look for targets. Just by depressing a switch to Super Search, the set does a radar spotlight for you, automatically locking on the target as soon as it enters the head-up display field of view. It is automatically tracked unless you decide to break lock. The radar then searches until it locks on another one. This way, you don't waste time looking for targets. And with this radar, you don't have to worry about losing him, even when you track him through the beam. One of my favorite features is the target designator box. This square on the high 
shot shows you the actual location in azimuth and elevation of the target you're tracking. When he comes in eyeball range, you don't have to hunt for him. He'll be in that box. In a dogfight, it's a hell of a help, because it keeps an eye on him while you're looking for other bandits. When you fire your missile, it tells you where he is while it's in flight. That way you can see the results of your weapon firing. Another feature I like is the radar's built-in self-test, which automatically tells if there's a malfunction. If the no-go light comes on, you've got six channels and several modes you can change to. One of these usually clears up the problem. If not, pushing a single button initiates a complete test of the entire radar. These missions convinced me, right now with this radar and this aircraft, I'd be willing to take on anybody. While the ultimate proof of the F-15 radar is its performance in flight, high reliability and ease of maintenance make it available when needed. The Category 1 and 2 testing has demonstrated radar reliability and ease of maintenance in the field. Flight line maintenance is easily performed by Air Force technicians. No external age is needed at the flight line. If a malfunction occurs, a bit check will locate the problem. The unit fault indicator latch then shows which unit has failed. Repair is just a matter of replacing the faulty unit. After replacement, no system adjustments are needed. Faults can be located and the unit replaced in about 15 minutes. Okay, okay. Uh, Lobo, uh, LVP SVP 2A183, yeah. check control, power door. The faulty unit is repaired at the squadron shop by module replacement after simple go, no go testing. The faulty module is sent to the depot where it's checked on an automatic test station. The module is then repaired, retested, and returned to supply. This graph shows how reliability has constantly improved throughout category one and two testing as integration proceeded and as experience was gained by pilots and maintenance personnel. A cumulative MTBF of 39 hours was achieved, although only 30 hours was required for these early radar sets. The radar is now in operational use and with this kind of trend, there should be no difficulty in achieving the guaranteed 60 hours as the radar and its support system mature. The radar is in full-scale production, with sets being manufactured at a rate of nine per month. This rate could be doubled within current contract provisions if needed. To ensure quality and high reliability, components are screened at each stage of production. In addition, several sets selected at random are subjected to stringent environmental conditions during agree testing. Using Hughes isopod containers, this quality control is maintained through shipment and installation in the production aircraft. Air Force testing and operational use have proved the radar's superior ability to perform air-to-air -air missions. The radar's visual air-to-ground capability has also been proven. In recent Air Force testing, the F-15 has demonstrated a bombing accuracy equal to or better than any attack aircraft in the inventory. The APG-63's ground map mode has also been evaluated. The resolution in this mode is similar to that of the F-4. Beyond these current capabilities, significant new air-to-ground features can be added. For example, with software and minor hardware changes only, the radar can provide an even better all-weather ground attack capability, including the ability to detect, designate, and track ground targets. It can also provide precision navigation positioning, high-resolution ground mapping, and the pointing or cueing of narrow field of view sensors. These capabilities can be added by incorporating proven synthetic aperture techniques into the radar, Doppler beam sharpening, high resolution ground mapping, and ground target tracking. Doppler beam sharpening greatly improves the resolution of forward mapping by processing the Doppler shift from ground patches as the radar beam moves across them. 
This sharpening improves the forward-looking ground map, and thus the navigation positioning and initial point recognition. By squinting the radar antenna to the side, and similarly processing the Doppler information, high-resolution synthetic aperture ground mapping can be produced. Synthetic aperture radar provides near photographic quality maps for precision location and designation of initial points for air-to-ground weapon delivery. When these capabilities are combined with ground target tracking, targets can readily be detected and designated for attack or for navigation update. Terrain following to permit low-level penetration can be provided in the radar by time-sharing the antenna scanning and data processing under computer control. Thus, while retaining all of its air-to-air -air capabilities, the radar, with minor modification, could provide the F-15 with vastly improved all-weather air-to-ground modes to enhance its navigation and air-to-ground strike performance. It has proven its ability to defeat all comers in air-to-air -air combat. And it is capable of even greater performance and many other missions. Yes, the eyes of this eagle are remarkable. But the eyes of this eagle are much better. Once the prey comes in range, there is no place he can hide. <laughs>